Today in Parliament, we heard the Prime Minister and the government introduce a bill to amend the Income Tax Act. So they've raised the threshold of non-taxable income from $18,000 to $25,000. And that's good. But the reality, that's not what they promised. When they were in opposition and after the impact of COVID and just before the elections, this same government, knowing what the economic situation of the country was, promised people $48,000 threshold. Today, we heard that this is the first step and that the next step is due to come sometime down the road. That's not what they said. They said they were going to re increase the non-taxable threshold to 48,000. What I was also disappointed was that in the presentation where they talked about the, the number of people that would have benefited from the increasing of the threshold, which is a couple of thousand, because remember, a lot of people were already benefiting from 18,000 and less. What they didn't talk about is the increase in the tax burden on thousands of other solutions. So at a time when gas prices are at an all time high and the government has done nothing to cushion the blow, electricity prices, water prices, bus fares, cost of living in general has been skyrocketing and this government has done nothing to soften the blow to the people they say they put first. The reality though, is it doesn't matter what the tax rate is if you don't have a job. Now this government expected that when they came into government that the coffers would have been empty. And we've heard them tout that message over and over again. But now we heard in the social and economic review that that wasn't true. In fact, St. Lucia was the fastest recovering economy in the OECS and the second fastest recovering economy in CARICOM. After seeing a 24% decline in our GDP, mainly because of what happened to tourism, we saw a 12.5% recovery, 50% recovery in one year. And it was expected that this year we would have seen an 8% growth. But we see that that's not going to happen. That 8% growth was premised on the fact that the HI airport would have been underway. St. Jude's would be near completion. Roads would have continued. Housing developments would have continued. Hotel projects would have started. The police headquarters in Castries would have commenced. The hotel at Point Seraphim. Projects like Cabot and the Dyer Mall all were playing a significant contribution in that expectation. But this government has reversed those policies with no apology. It is clear for all of us to see now that when we made the allegation that they were just beating pans and there was no plans, that was true. It's also true that it's only words when they say they put people first. It's only words when they say that they are people centric. Look what's going on with the CCJ. You would have thought that a government that was elected on the promise of putting people first and being people centric and trust the people, that they would have been the first to say to have a referendum. But no, 15 people who got 26% of the popular vote in St. Lucia, they want to make the decisions for everyone. Today is a reminder that this government is going in reverse. This government doesn't know what it's doing. And our continued silence is not going to work. Well, I can say for me, the attempts that I've seen over the last year and in the House today to silence my voice will not work. I will continue to stand for those people in St. Lucia who cannot speak for themselves. I will continue to fight for a better St. Lucia. A solution in which everyone can prosper. A solution in which the government's role is to create opportunity, not to pick and choose who the winners are. So my fellow solutions, more and more, the People's Parliament is going to have to play a role in the governance of this country. The 76% of the people who either voted for United Workers' Party or did not vote, you cannot continue to allow your voices to be in silence and not heard. This government is a reckless government.
this government does not know what it's doing. All it can do is to make excuses. Can't build roads in the rain. And the moment the people put pressure on, all of a sudden they start building roads in the rain. The coffers were empty. All the evidence to the contrary. The world is falling apart. Well, there's always a crisis in the world. That's the role of a government, is to figure out how to work around those things. I'm proud that when we had our crises, I didn't complain, found solutions. Solutions to put solutions back to work. Solutions to build a better solution. Solutions to make solution more competitive. And I do not ask for an apology because I want a better standard of living for solutions in healthcare, in education, and in our infrastructure. I want to see our entertainers be given every opportunity to succeed on a global market. But this is a government of pretenders.